In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the different coordinate systems that you're going to be working with throughout the rest of the semester. And this is going to require us to talk about matrices as well, at least at a high level, because those are what allow us to transition between these different coordinate systems. All right, the first coordinate system that we're going to talk about is called the local coordinate system, and this is sometimes called object space. Now realize that when an artist makes a 3D model, they typically use some 3D modeling software like Maya or Blender or 3D Studio Max. In the image that you see here, I went to a site called Mixamo and downloaded a model, and then I imported it into Maya. Now, what's important to note is where this model is in relation to the point 000. In this case, that point is directly between the monster's feet, but sometimes you'll see that the model's actually been shifted down so that that point is directly in the middle of the model. So in summary, the local coordinate system is simply the coordinate system that the model was made in. All right, the next coordinate system that we're going to talk about is the world coordinate system, sometimes called the world space. And this is the coordinate system of the virtual environment that the model is going to be in. So for example, we may want to embed this creature into some kind of virtual world. But notice that the point between his feet is no longer 0, 0, 0. Instead, he's now been translated into the world coordinate system. And if we were to view this environment from the top, you can see that these worlds can be pretty large. Now the question is, how did we get the monster to go from the local coordinate system into the world coordinate system? Well, before we talk about that, we need to talk about one more coordinate system. The next coordinate system we need to talk about is called the camera coordinate system, and this is sometimes called the camera space or the view space. Realize that in this coordinate system, everything is relative to the camera's position. And when you think of it in these terms, the camera never moves. Instead, the world moves around the camera. As an example of this concept, look at the image below. In this case, we have a creature directly in front of us, but because the camera's position is fixed at the origin in the camera coordinate system, the creature's position in the camera coordinate system might be something like 0, 0, negative 10. If we were to move closer to the creature, its camera space coordinates might be something like 0, 0, negative 5. Realize that the camera is not moving forward through the environment, but everything in the environment is moving around the camera. So here's the main idea. How do we transition our creature between these different coordinate systems? Well, for every model that's in the scene, it's going to have a model matrix. And what this is going to do is transform that model from object space into world space. To get that model into the camera coordinate system, we're going to have a view matrix. Realize that unlike needing one model matrix per model, we're only going to need one view matrix. Now, depending on who you talk to, some people combine the model and view matrices into one matrix called the model view matrix. However, in this class, we're going to keep this information separate because it makes it easier to think about. Now, we've been using the term matrix, but we really haven't talked about what a matrix is. A matrix is a mathematical structure that has the ability to translate and rotate and scale 2D and 3D points. And usually we store a matrix as a 4x4 array of floats. In fact, you can see an example of one over here on the right-hand side. This is a special matrix called the identity matrix. Now the basic idea is that we're going to multiply each vertex of a model by a matrix and this is going to give us a new point. So for example, we may take a vertex and multiply it by a rotation matrix to figure out where that vertex would be if it was rotated. The really cool thing about this is that your graphics card is really efficient with matrices, so we try to get everything into matrix form. Alright, now if you multiply an integer times an integer, you're going to get back an integer. Similarly, if you multiply a matrix by a matrix, you get back a single matrix. So the question is, how could we construct the model matrix that takes us from the object space into the world space? Well, imagine that we have a couple of different matrices. We have a translation matrix called T, a couple of different rotation matrices, R1 and R2, and a scaling matrix called S. All of these matrices might be necessary to correctly place our creature into the world. So initially you might think that we would have an equation that looks like the one you see here. However, before we go on, we have to have a meaningful discussion about matrix order. All right, good. When we multiply matrices together, the effects that it has on the vertex are going to occur from left to right. And to show what I mean by this, we have to walk through an example. If the order of operation says first rotate by 45 degrees and then do a translate by 10 units, the end result is going to look like what you see here. However, if the order of operations is reversed such that we do the translation first and then the rotation, you can see that the results are drastically different. 
And so the lesson learned here is that the order of matrix operations is important. So going back to how we constructed the model matrix, you can see that we actually did it backwards. Instead, you'll probably want to scale first, followed by a series of rotations, and then finish with a translation. So the last matrix we have to talk about is called the projection matrix, and its responsibility is to take 3D data and project it into 2D space. Now we have two different kinds of projection. We have orthographic projection, and that means that depth doesn't really matter. Now the other kind of projection that we have is a perspective projection, and this is what's used to give depth to the scene. In other words, as objects get further away from the camera, they become smaller. Now, interestingly, the end result of multiplying by the projection matrix is that it gives us normalized device coordinates. And if you remember, we've seen this term before. These are coordinates between negative one and positive one. Now, the difference between an orthographic and a perspective projection can be subtle, but I tried to give you a demonstration of what that would look like. The left image is the orthographic projection, and the right one is the perspective. Now, I've purposely put a couple of red spheres in the scene so that you could see the difference between these two. And in the orthographic projection, you can see that those spheres remain the same size. However, if you look at the perspective projection on the right-hand side, you can see that the spheres are different sizes. In other words, the spheres that are further away from the camera appear smaller. Now, we're finally at the point that we can understand what's been going on in the vertex shader. The example that you see here is an old vertex shader that we've been using. And if you remember, the position information that we passed to V position had to be in the range of negative one to positive one. And if you look down here in main, you can see that we've assigned V position into GL position, which is in normalized device coordinates. Now in our new vertex shader, a couple of things have changed. First of all, V position is assumed to be in the local coordinate system, or the one that it was modeled in. Also notice that we have three different matrices here called M, V, and P, and that's for the model, view, and projection matrices. And where it gets interesting is in how we use those down in main. In this case, we take V position and we multiply it by those three matrices, and that's gonna give us a new position in the normalized device coordinates. In other words, in this one line of code, we've taken a vertex from its local coordinate system and calculated its new position in normalized device coordinates. So that's it. I know that was a lot to digest, but these are pretty important concepts. So what I would recommend as always is to go back and review this material a couple of times.